Hey there, Lisa Niven Kelly here for beachcation.com and I want to introduce you to our scuff guards. They are magnetic, so they stick to your bench block, but they're thin enough that you can stamp on them without getting a doubled impression or a shadowed look. However, if you're using a really difficult stamp, I would remove this and just work on the bench block. We've got three different styles. One is blank, and we also have a polar grid you can use to divide your circles up. And this one is just got the classic grid paper design on it. By putting this on your bench block and then stamping on top of it, you'll get less scuff marks on the back of your blank. So let me show you. First, I'll stamp it here on the scuff guard, and then I'll stamp it just laying plain on the bench block. And let's see what the back looks like when you compare the two. The one on the right is the one stamped on the bench block and the one on the left was stamped on the scuff guard. And you can see the difference. There's still a bit of a protrusion on the one on the left, but the metal has to go somewhere, but it's not scuffed and kind of scratchy like you see the one on the right. The main use for the polar grid is to divide up your blank. I've just doubled over some tape here so I can stick my blank to the grid and I'm gonna center it right here between these two circle guidelines and place it down so it's easier to draw my radiating lines on. So I'm gonna line my straight edge up with this line here first. And keep in mind that you need to accommodate for the thickness of your pen. So if your pen is kind of thick, you need to move the straight edge a little bit to the side. Otherwise, if the straight edge is right on top of the line, your pen mark will be to the right of the line. Does that make sense? <laughs> All right, let's draw this line here. So if you've done your job right, then this right here is the exact center of your blank. You can also obviously use this to draw as many radiating lines as you want. I use these lines to help me get started with mandala stamping because I usually start on the outside and work my way in. So this is great guidelines for that. Now there are tons of different ways to use the graph paper scuff guard, but here's one that I find myself doing a lot. So let's say I wanna have a design on the blank and I want it centered and then I want a word below it. So first I'll line up my blank on the grid paper and draw a line right down the middle. And then maybe another line using those grid lines down below, not centered because I want the word sort of down below. So line it up carefully there and draw my line. Cool. Okay, so there I've got the guidelines. So let's say I wanted to do like some flowers up here and I'm just drawing this to show you the sample. I don't usually draw out my flowers and um, maybe a word down here. So you can see how everything is kind of sectioned out here for you to help you get it all centered. And here's another useful tip. So let's say you are doing some production work with this rectangle and you needed to always know where the middle is. I'm gonna draw these guidelines based on where I've laid it kind of evenly on the graph paper and then one line to show the center. So this way, every time you go to stamp it, all you have to do is lay it right there and you know the center. So it's, it's a lot faster than measuring out each blank and marking the middle. Just lay it there and there's your center line. And then when you're done, you just grab a tissue and wipe it off. If you needed your lines to be a little more permanent, you can use Sharpie on these. And when you're ready to remove it, just use a little rubbing alcohol on a tissue. Don't use nail polish remover because it tends to break down the printing on top of the magnet. So just wipe that guy off and you're good to go. There's also many different ways to use the blank one. You can do guidelines or why not use it to write out the word that you're stamping. That way you can count the letters, you know exactly the middle of your word. You can go ahead and stamp that 
And then when you're finished, just come in again and wipe that off. One more thing I want to point out is when stamping on a thin metal like 24 gauge on the scuff guard, it provides a little bit of a cushion, so somewhere kind of for the metal to go. Where, you know, on these thin gauges, when you stamp, they're so thin, there's really not a lot of place for the metal to go, so it's hard to get a good impression. So on here, I stamped on the scuff guard. Here, let me flip it over. So the one on the right was on the scuff guard. So it's not scuffed, but you can see it kind of protruding through. And the one on the left was just plain on the bench block. So it's scuffed, but not as protruded, if that makes sense. <laughs> so that might be a good thing. It might be a bad thing, but thought it was worth pointing out. Last but not least, I just want to point out that these bad boys will not last forever. You will need to replace them after using them for a while. I think I've used this one for like four months pretty consistently, and I learned on this one not to use the nail polish remover because it removes a print, as you can see here, but it actually still works. I mean, I can still lay it down and use a lot of parts of it, but just wanted to show you that after some use, you might need to replace them.